Hey, this is Kenyon Drake. You're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! <laughs> He's dead. He's gone. It's just you and me, Mike. Oh, I thought that was a. I, that was my Daniel that Jones intro, Daniel Jones. baby. Yeah. That was my Daniel Jones. The stumble. Welcome in. <laughs> what the? I mean, that the play has to get named. Like this, this the oh, the rumble stumble, <laughs> rumble bumble. <laughs> I mean, spectacular television. Yes. The the game, the NFC East, all of it personified in one incredible play. Right before the show, we were reflecting on Daniel Jones' incredible run. Joe Buck screaming, he's gone! Because <laughs> he was. He was gone. And then he wasn't. And uh, what did you say? You said next-gen stats put Daniel Jones how fast? They, yeah, they clocked it. I don't have the number right in front of me. We can try and find it. But the the point was... Daniel Jones was running so fast, he was just a fraction under Tyreek Hill's fastest speed of this year. He was running like 21 miles an hour. Daniel freaking Jones was loose. He ran clearly. He was. He's never run that fast before in his life. Because, his face. Because did his, you see his face? His face was like it, he no longer had control of his body. His body was running him, and he did not know what to do. And he did not make it. <laughs> no, he, he, he did not make it. Uh, that was personally oh. painful for me. I played Daniel Jones in our dynasty league. Oh my! I, much to my chagrin. So that was a, what is that? Another another tw uh, fifteen yards a touchdown in the bonus? Yes. So that was massive points that we missed or that I missed out on. I'm sure. Were you counting on the old eighty-five yard touchdown run from the quarterback? No, no, I, I certainly <laughs> was not. But I had I had to let it go. I. I didn't get mad. That was the funniest thing I have seen in a really long time. Thank you, Daniel Jones. The entire New York Giants sideline appreciated it. They all laughed. Daniel Jones did not think it was very funny. That though. game last night was what the NFC East <laughs> promised us. It was, a, it was a game where it really seemed like neither team could win. And even when finally it seemed like one was going to win, they didn't. It was incredible. Ended on a Daniel Fumble Jones uh, fumble. Yeah, it it was a uh, it was a football game. Yes, and uh, the Eagles came out on top by a point. And Boston Scott came through in the oh. final forty seconds. So, uh, if you played him, you were very happy. If you saw him on your opponent's roster, as Jason did. Mm -hmm. Super You're very frustrating. Unhappy. And it, what's funny is I was happy for the majority of the game. I mean, this is they're using three running backs. He's not looking great. And then at the very end of the game, I'm like, oh no, he put up a ton of points. I on think me. I think you need a different word than majority because there was forty seconds left in the game. That is eh, you win some, you lose some. I lost that one. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh and Deshaun Jackson hurt again. Oh. He gets hurt in every game he plays, and he's gonna be out multiple weeks. Travis Fulgham looked great again, uh, in my opinion. And He's a real deal. He is. He seems to be. And and the thing is, is whether he is or not, Carson Wentz throws him the football. He targets him. I had a memory that was not real uh, okay. of All right. me picking him up in Dynasty. And I was so excited. And I went and I looked at my roster. I was like, I, in fact, did not do that. <laughs> I, I thought is that, I... Is that a dream? Did you have a dream? No, I just... I, Were you awake? It's like a Blade Runner situation. I thought I had picked him up, and I was very happy. And Who then got I went him to in go, Dynasty? I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I spent all my fab on him after that breakout performance, but... Uh, yeah, we it was it was entertaining. We also saw what happens to Carson Wentz when he has a tight end one oh playing my. for him. Oh, my. Uh, who led the team in receiving, by the way, six for 85 for Richard Rodgers. If you had the courage to trust the process of that Carson Wentz throws to the tight end position, you should be very happy. And you, Richard Richard Rodgers is going to be a hot pickup. That's what I was going to ask you hot. for the next uh, few weeks. We think Goddard will come back when? Week, week 10. Week 10? Yeah, they're saying week 10. but 
Who knows? All right. Yeah, it was interesting. It is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. All right, it's Foot Clan Friday, a weekly giveaway for a supporter over at jointhefoot.com. This week's item from Pristine Auction, a signed Chris Godwin jersey. Ooh. Oh, mercy. Is that what you snagged, Brooks? That's a nice one. Oh, yeah. Uh, Joe Forte is the winner over at uh, jointhefoot.com. Congratulations, Joe. Thank yeah. you for supporting the You got a Chris, Chris Goblin jersey. Uh, which reminds me, we do have a Halloween episode coming up in one week, and Brooks has managed to put together a little highlight of our last, what, five years worth of Halloween shows? Yes, sir. So that'll be up on Twitter at the FF Ballers today, and uh, brought back some memories, especially that first Halloween. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> the, stu <laughs> the studio's had some upgrades since then. Uh, I would say that first one... Uh we phoned that in. That was it was just the begin. We didn't know what it would become. That's right. So we've got things planned for next week. You'll definitely want to go to youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. That is one of the most watched episodes of the year because people want to come in and mm -hmm. see what when I saw the highlight film, I still couldn't believe how funny you looked as Jeff Fisher. <laughs> that was Your Jeff one. Fisher was outstanding. It was so that's I a would credit say it to was your mate. Eight eight. It was a, it was yeah. just okay. It was a five hundred. That's fair. That's a good point. And speaking of memories, today, fellas, <gasps> today is National Best Friends Day, as dubbed by me and Jason <laughs> last year. October so, 23rd. I don't so, know why I'm here. So, he, he, Foot Clan, this is just a really funny story. Uh, so, last year, Andy was out. Uh, it was the show. So, the show was just Jason and I. Somehow, at some point, I declared... It was National Best Friends Day because we were really playing up that Jason and I were we were the best of friends on that particular day. Which you always seem to be when I'm gone. Yeah, when yeah. you're gone, we yeah. are best friends. Yeah, that, that is that is correct. And I said I'm putting this in my calendar to remind remind me next year. So this week rolls around. I'm looking at the calendar. Oh, what's going on? And then there's this <laughs> note. It says October 23rd, Best Friends Day in our work calendar. And I messaged you guys. I said, uh, what the heck? Is, you what didn't even guys, know what it was. Guys, what is this? And we're all trying to figure it out. And then we start getting messages on Twitter that's, oh, guys, Best Friends Day is coming up. And I said, what is happening? We got a package in the mail. We, someone designed a logo of Jason and I with Jay Grizz celebrating. It's a handsome logo. Best, best Friends Day. And I had completely forgotten about it. And so what I have learned, number one, it is National Best Friends Day. Send your best friends some encouraging words. Like, just lift up someone's day. And number two, your words are powerful. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I just threw something out in jest that I did not remember. But clearly, a lot of people were, were waiting for this to celebrate such a holiday. It seems like of all the holidays I should get off, your best friend's day should be the one that I get to sit at home. I should have had my coffee on, on the porch, on a rocking chair, just... I mean, we're sitting on the thrones, but this is, you know, this is for all. Yeah, Anybody who's my with best, the best friend, friend in this situation? You're going to have to find one, yeah. Andy. This yeah, we're, is our, we're you available, Brooks? Spoken for. Yes, sir. Okay, Brooks oh, is available. There it is. And Al's left on his own. Uh, I'm sorry, Al. You probably have somebody somewhere. No? No. 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 Okay. No. Who gives a hoot? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. All right. We did have a scheduled change. The Buccaneers Raiders game that was originally the Sunday night football game out of an abundance of caution. The NFL moved this game because there is there remains the possibility that this game is affected by the COVID situation. So it did come out that that's the the reason they moved it. Mm. They they put the Cardinals Seahawks in the Sunday night spot, and so right now the Buccaneers game's still happening. The Cardinals game's happening, but that is the Sunday night game. Yeah, all the the tests came back great today for uh, the Raiders. So the the expectation is game on. All right. Uh, otherwise, yeah, that's that's very good news. Otherwise, Michael Thomas. This is a headline for fantasy players. Because he didn't practice on Thursday. He tweaked his hamstring, which violates the uh, code of ethics. You're not allowed to have more than one injury at once. I don't know if you guys knew that. 
I was aware. Michael Thomas was not. Maybe that's the discipline from last week. He two injuries. Yep. You're you're gone. But no, Ian Rappaport back on Twitter calling him a long shot to play on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, look, if you really did hurt your hamstring, I mean, we we saw it with Julio Jones, we saw it with Devonte Adams. I mean, we, I mean, you you can't play with an injured hamstring. So he, the fact that he's not practicing and being called a long shot to play. That being said, I would imagine that uh, at this point, the fantasy managers have a pivot option because they have not yet had Michael Thomas. Well, let's go in or out on Michael Thomas. And do you think he plays? Nope. No. Okay, neither do I. Joe Mixon didn't practice again on Thursday. Uh, he's not practicing today. Zach Taylor calls him day to day. If we're if we're going in and out on Joe Mixon, I am still in. I still believe Joe Mixon will play this week. Yeah, I I lean that they're just giving him rest because it's a problem. Um, but I don't I I don't confidently know he's going to play. And well, Andy, let's talk this real quick. <clears throat> What is your confidence in throwing Joe Mixon into your starting lineup? It, this isn't ribs. This isn't just, uh, I, I can deal with some pain or I get a shot that hopefully doesn't puncture my lungs and, and I play through it. This is, a, this is a foot problem. This actually will affect performance. On top of that, it's a foot injury, so you have a, a decent probability of re-aggravating and leaving the game. You know, uh, Joe Mixon's, I believe, leading the league in touches at the running back position. I think... I'd like him to make it easy on me, which is, look, if he can't play, just let's declare him out. Let me make a pivot for my fantasy team. If he's active, I'm playing Joe Mixon. That's okay. just what I'm going to do. Uh, so if you – let's say David Montgomery is a pivot option. Would you still play Joe Mixon over David Montgomery? I do everything I can to play anybody over David Montgomery. That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I, my confidence is that Joe Mixon will play through – he's played through injury before. So if he's active, I'm playing him. That's just – the the way I'm going to go about it. Okay. Uh, Daryl Henderson didn't practice due to a thigh injury. This is unfortunate. It's a Monday night football game. Goodness gracious. Thir but man. missing Thursday practice for a Monday night game is basically like missing the Wednesday. So I'm not worried yet. Are you picking up Cam Akers? If I've got Henderson, yeah. I mean, I, okay. you need to be ready to pivot. I got some terrible news. Uh, Al Borland in desperation searching for a best friend today because he didn't have one. Ending up having to settle for the loser. Oh no! What a what a loser! Are you talking that would be Brian Ketrin. Oh, gross. The uh, illustrious loser of the listener league from <laughs> years gone by, and still a loser to this day. Oh, I mean, a lovable loser. Sure. Is there a better word than illustrious? No. Legitimate. Legitimate is better than illustrious. Yes. No, oh. you were saying the way it sounds. Yeah. Yeah. No. To use. Yeah. You just it just in I'm. I'm just commending Andy on going with the word illustrious. It's Which a, word is more illustrious? It's illustrious? A, <laughs> well, that's a, or, this is not a fair game. Or legitimate. Leading the witness. <laughs> I object. Uh, I'm sorry, Al, but uh, at least you got one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. And you're certainly the better of the two. Oh, big time. You always got to choose a best friend that's not quite as good as you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's, that's good plan. Sorry, Brooks. Good plan. I uh, see what you're doing over I there, I think Jason. we both know who that is, right, Brooks? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I know, right. my, I know my role. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's good news. Johnny Smith, practice full on Thursday. That's great. Uh, he should play. But with the Daryl Henderson news, do you have do you, have you lost confidence because of Monday Night Football with Cam Akers, Malcolm Brown, and the, the variables in the running game? Not yet. Okay. We do have an injury blitz podcast coming out later this afternoon or tomorrow. Brooks, are those normally coming out late Friday or early Saturday? Usually getting them out late Friday. Okay, so that's uh, jointhefoot.com if you want to get in on that. That'll have all the Friday practice reports and some reflections from our injury expert, Matthew Betts, on what to do with some of these players. Jamison Crowder didn't practice. Added to the injury report with a groin injury. Ah! Look, if Jamison Crowder misses this game or is limited, Brashad Perryman is an actual mm. player that you could think about. It sounds like you're talking about the Jets, Andy. I don't. I, I've been chastised over and over for talking about the Jets. Do you agree with me? Yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah. I, Brashad Perriman could play. And, and, Maybe. And, as of right now, they are expecting Sam Darnold to be there. Th this is – you never want to see a player midweek get downgraded, and that's what's happened with Crowder. So I think you've got to take that serious and look for other options. Likewise, A.J. Brown – for the Titans, he did not practice Wednesday. He did not practice Thursday. That is I'm, 
Is that true? I thought he practiced in full on Wednesday. That's the report that I have. He, and then didn't practice. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Practice did not practice in full, but did not practice at <laughs> all. A full did not participate on Thursday. That's what I'm saying is when you are downgraded midweek, that's usually a very bad sign. Yes. So didn't practice Wednesday or did practice Wednesday, didn't practice Thursday. Correct. Downgrade. We got there. Okay. Uh, Robert Tunyon. Yeah, big we, news. We found out uh, this is uh, how you pronounce his last name. It's Tunyon, not Tanyan. It's Tunyon. Tons like of Paul, fun. Like Paul Bunyan. Yes. Oh, Paul Bunyan. Our really only opportunity to potentially defeat Gigantor in a battle. Paul Bunyan, while smaller than Gigantor, does could compete with the axe that he has. Well, he has an axe, and does he get his big blue ox? Babe. That's too much. That, yeah? Uh, Animal warfare? It's too much? It's cheating? Yeah, I'm not sure. That's too much. All right. That's too much. Uh, but he is he was limited in practice. Did not have a, a great game. This is a new, you know, he's not been in the rotation for fantasy players before. It gives me a little hesitation. Sure. Tyler Higby, non-participant at Thursday's practice. Higby has been one of the most uh, recently added players to waiver wires that I've yep. seen. I've seen him hit waiver wires quite a bit. Yep. But Gerald Everett, I want to. I'm bringing this up because Gerald Everett is a great play. If Higby was to miss this that, week, that is a good point. I would feel I would feel much better with Everett than I would Tanya this week if that was the situation. Any other injury news you guys want to touch on? Nope. All right, let's get back into the forecast. Fantasy forecast. All right, we covered the Lions, Falcons, Browns, Bengals, Steelers, Titans, Panthers, Saints, Bills, Jets, Cowboys, and Washington yesterday, and we've got seven games remaining. A reminder, the Colts, Dolphins, Vikings, and Ravens are on by this week, so let's get into the matchups. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 4-2 and two, taking on the Las Vegas Raiders, who are currently 3-2. and two. This game's uh, in Las Vegas. The Buccaneers are four-point favorites. It's a 52-point over-under. I, I'm not quite sure what to think of Tampa Bay. I think they are a pretty good team. They have had a couple of games where they don't look that way. <laughs> and then uh, the majority, they've looked like they're figuring it out. So let's start at the quarterback position. Uh, Tampa Bay has been really good. The defensive side of the football. They're third right now. I don't think Derek Carr is an option in this game. He is not. Uh, they're only giving up 14 fantasy points per game to the quarterback position. On the other side, my taking it to 100 player was Tom Brady this week. The Raiders are 20th against opposing fantasy quarterbacks. And I think they're starting to figure this offense out. We give, you know, Tom Brady maybe we have high expectations for him because he's Tom Brady, right? I mean, he has high expectations for himself. Still learning a new offense, dealing with players coming back from injury. Chris Godwin back last week. So I think that they're going to become more consistent on the offensive side of the ball, and I think it could start in this game here. They're favored. It's a good over-under. Do you guys feel confident enough to start Brady this week? Yeah, he, he's he's certainly in the mix as as a streamable option. This isn't a scary matchup. You're getting healthier in the wide receiver core. I really like uh, most of the Tampa Bay options, um, so I'm I'm absolutely fine starting Brady. The the one worry that I would have, and the reason he's not a absolute must start, is that the Raiders are very porous on the ground so far this season against the running back position. Ronald Jones has been looking amazing. The defense of the Buccaneers looks great. So there is the the outcome where and and you need to decide what you believe about this game, but I do think there is a game script where Ronald Jones is phenomenal, has another 100-yard game, has two touchdowns and they don't really need to air it out that much. But the Raiders have not gone quietly into the night. They have beat good teams, they have surprised, they've hit the over in all five of their games this year. So while I see that as an outcome, that isn't what I expect to happen. Okay. Uh, let's look at the running backs. Ronald Jones, you talked about it. He's been great. The Raiders at 31st against running backs. Yes. Must you're, start. you're playing him despite Fournette practicing in full and any worries that you have. You just got to keep. He was going to be my start of the week, but I felt like everyone would start him. That He's on fire, him. right? Three yes. straight weeks. So just make sure you start him. Josh Jacobs, uh, he's been uh, pretty great this year coming off the bye. 
We do have offensive line concerns. The test coming back, uh, I guess that would be coming back negative. That is a positive for Josh Jacobs. But again, the defensive front for Tampa. Josh Jacobs' success is obviously connected to the Raiders winning. And the, the kind of identity of this team is they want to get out to a lead and they want to be able to run the football. Uh, they want to be able to slow the game down a little bit. And Jacobs has been very good, but he's he's got five touchdowns on the year. They've just come in two of the five games he's played. Yeah, I mean, we, we said this before last week that Josh Jacobs has his good games in, in wins. And we didn't expect him to win the last time out against Kansas City Chiefs. They did. He had a great game. Um, I don't expect the Raiders to win this game. I think that the Buccaneers are the better team. But if they if, – Well, if and you just win, don't bench Josh Jacobs. No, you, I mean, no, you don't you bench can't. anyone with that kind of volume. All right, Henry Ruggs. What do we think about Henry Ruggs' possibilities of, in this game? 55%, 55% of his targets have been 20-plus yards down the field. That is the highest rate in the NFL. He is the true one-touch man mm -hmm. of the NFL right now based on those numbers. You willing to take a shot, take a chance? Um, I don't like it <laughs> this particular week. The, the, the Buccaneers, they have some strong corners, including the, the emergence of Carlton Davis. Uh, the Bucks are a legit defense. They, they have fixed things over here. They are seventh currently against fantasy wide receivers. They can get pressure on the quarterback as well. So I, this, this isn't the, the matchup where I am looking to throw Henry Ruggs into my flex. All right. Uh, I don't remember which one of you guys talked about Mike Evans, maybe letting him go shopping him. Uh, Jason, were you the one who brought that up a yeah, couple I, days ago? I, I think I'm on board with you. He's 29th in targets right now, second in touchdowns. He's tied with Cole Beasley, Travis Fulgham in targets this year. Yeah, he's he's been propped up by touchdowns, and he's a guy that can do that the whole season. It's not something where it's like because he's had touchdowns, they're going to go away, they're going to regress, and you need to get rid of them. We've seen him several seasons with double-digit touchdowns, but you need to understand – that in those games he doesn't get a touchdown, he's going to be straight up garbage. And in you, when you compare the games that he has played with Chris Godwin, I mean he's capping out at two catches. That's not the and and he's got a big name, so I think you can flip him for something more reliable, uh, more consistent. Are we going to see the 2019 version of Chris Godwin at some point this year? Is this an opportunity for him? This week, I mean, his highest fantasy finish on the year is 22 right now. Dealt with the injuries. Has played three games, though. And, I mean, it's just disappointing right now for fantasy players. I, I think that this could be the game he gets on track. He's, you know, he's he is a game removed now from returning from the injury. Give him a, give him a little bit of time there to get more involved. All right, you're always playing Darren Waller. What about Gronkowski in this matchup? It's... It's interesting. The matchup isn't great. Raiders are tenth against fantasy wide receivers right now, uh, actually tied with the Buccaneers. But he is getting more involved. He had the touchdown last week. He had uh, he had another end zone target as well, where Tom Brady just missed. I can't remember if it was Gronk or Brady, but I, I've, my memory is Brady just missed him uh, for a for a second touchdown. So while guys like Scotty Miller are fading into the into the dust. And Gronkowski is starting to get things going, which it's not it, it's not it's not that shocking that he is doing that now. Like at the beginning of the year, they weren't asking him to do a lot. He was a dude who had not played football in over a year on a brand new team. So the fact and then that you lose OJ Howard. You lost OJ Howard. Yeah, that's that's an excellent point as well. Now you have more opportunities for him. So it it makes sense that he is starting to get more involved. Over the last four games, his target pace on the year is 94. That's that's a great number for a tight end. Yeah, I mean, I, Gronk is someone that you can start as well as anybody out there off of waivers. Although Would you Gronk play him was, over Everett if Everett was alone? No, no. If Everett was alone, I think he's a smash play. Okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, you, you saw him jump up to 29% of the targets last week. That's a That's an incredible number. All right, uh, we've got the Chiefs-Broncos game to get into. We do, and before that, we want to thank today's sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, Brewhouse Legends Snack Nut Mixes, brand new sponsor to the show. 
They're coming to you with the waiver wire pickup that you and your pantry simply oh my. can't skip out on. These people know what they're talking about. They know the audience they are speaking That's right. to. Uh, brew House Legends sought out a way to bring the passion and creativity of a craft beer brewing to the snack aisle. Spice up your game day with flavors like Michelita, Hops and Pepper, Hop and Chili, three unique snack mix flavors that are guaranteed to provide the salty, satisfying crunch you crave. We're all trying to keep our snack count 100. You got to keep that snack count 100, but you also got to keep you got to keep that bod, keep it tight, keep it right. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts oh, with Brewhouse oh, Legends yeah. Snack Nut Mixes. It's they're delicious, fellas. They're, ladies and gentlemen, they are absolutely taking things to a new to a new level with the Snack Nut Mixes. You got to check it out. Yeah, uh, you can go to brewhouselegends.com slash football to find out more details on how you can receive ten percent off your purchase of Brewhouse Legends. That's brewhouselegends.com slash football. Brewhouse Legends crafted. For Sundays, take your snack count to 100. To 100. All right, and we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting this independent podcast, keeping it going. You've heard us talk about Pristine Auction, and if you haven't taken the time to journey over on the World Wide Web to pristineauction.com, I encourage you to do so. Use the code BALLERS when you sign up over there, which it's free to make an account. They give you a $10 credit that's exclusive to this show. Then you can browse the hundreds of sports memorabilia auctions and find something for your hometown team. You've got Christmas coming up. What kind of gift? I mean, it's you don't get better than that. That is correct. A, an autographed piece of sports memorabilia for your favorite player. They've got current players. You know what? Devontae Adams signed cleat for 58 bucks this past week. Noah Fant, signed jersey, $70. T. Higgins, up and coming, 65 bucks. So you can kind of play these uh, current names, the fantasy names. You can even look at some legends. Maybe that's the gift you want to give your, your father, your mom, somebody who has a fan from you know mm -hmm. days gone by. You can check that out at pristineauction.com. Like old, I said, use the code BALLERS. Old people love gifts. Old, young, I mean. I think people like gifts. People in general. And they're affordable, so uh, definitely check them out. All right, back into the matchups. The Kansas City Chiefs at 5-1, and one, taking on the 2-3 and three Denver Broncos. Breaking news. So terrifying. You might want to update uh, your beliefs on Joe Mixon, Andy. Declared out? Out. Adam he Schefter reporting. All right, uh, I'm going to officially change my projection <laughs> for Joe Mixon. Oh, man. Actually, no, I'm not, because I said if he's active playing. And he's not. That's uh, that's big news. Yes. So Gio Bernard by will... this yeah by this time he's been picked up in every league. If he's in, if he's available in anybody's league, you must pick him up. But he's a great start, I think. You do? I do. I, I you when you have a backup like Giovanni Bernard coming in, who has proven capable in the past, and they don't really have anybody to share the work. Um, I mean, it, he won't be getting 100%, but a lot of times when those backups come in, they get even more work than the starter got because they are the only capable backup. Are mm. you ready for Are you ready for Samaj AP, Ryan? I am. Oh, man, the pain bot? Oh. The pain bot plus Travion Williams, maybe? Maybe, yeah, maybe Travion. A little, maybe. little bit of both. Maybe. Uh, Gio hasn't looked uh, spry in a long, long time. So count, if he doesn't catch the ball, hey, honestly – He's identical to what Boston Scott was yesterday, in my opinion. And that's how I would project them both. I think uh, they're both not great runners, and they're both very capable in the passing game. So uh, that's how I'd look at it. I think He is worth a start to me. He jumps up into the running back two area. Takes on Cleveland. All right. Well, no Mixon instead of Joe Mixon. Mm. That's sad. All right, the Chiefs at 5-1. and one, the, Bron the Broncos, after the big win over New England last week, the McManus victory. Uh, the Chiefs are 9.5-point road favorites in this one, 46-point over under. I don't think that strategy is going to work this week. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, they are not going to be able to score enough points. I mean, that's just what it comes down to. You're, the Broncos are not going to be able to score enough points against the Chiefs in this game. Don't worry, no almost upset coming here for Drew Locke and company. Mahomes is 5-0. and oh. Versus Denver in his career, uh, it, it's 
I don't know, 46 point over under. That's not a lot. That puts 27 points on the Chiefs side, 18 on the Broncos side. Melvin Gordon didn't play last week. So he's fresh. He's ready to go. I mean, I, I guess you're playing Melvin Gordon, but yes, Philip Lindsay looked are. good. Of course you are playing Melvin Gordon, but you have to remember back to week one. Philip Lindsay was getting opportunities, uh, so we haven't – unfortunately, we haven't been able to see the the true timeshare uh, between Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay. Lindsay is going to be uh, – he's going to take into the, the, the fantasy ceiling of Melvin Gordon. So, yeah, you are playing Gordon – but you aren't getting those couple weeks that of uh, of workhorse uh, volume that you were getting while Phil Lindsay was out. All right. Uh, we don't know on the other side of the ball whether Le'Veon Bell will make his debut in this game. And if he does, are you willing to, to take the risk on flexing him? Clyde Edwards-Alaire hey. was outstanding, and the Broncos' defensive front is out is great against the run. Yeah, they have been phenomenal against the run. I don't expect Le'Veon Bell, if he is active, to get more than seven or eight touches total. And when you're doing that against this great defense, in a divisional matchup that, you know, look, I, I realize that Denver is a team right now that is – hurting and the arrow is not pointing up and of course you're facing the defending Super Bowl champs but you know I I do think it's going to be a little bit closer of a game I you know I'm I wouldn't call it my almost upset because I don't know how Denver really scores a lot um well, no Fant is back yeah I mean having Noah Fant and Melvin Gordon is certainly going to help me better than it was last week for what it's worth, in those five games that Mahomes has played against Denver, Kansas City's never scored more than 30 points in any of those five games. Hmm, and the defense for Denver did look good last week. So I don't disagree with you that it could be you know, lower scoring, which will make it closer, but I just also, don't know if the Broncos can keep up. It's supposed up. to be a very cold weather game in the 20s. If it were to drop a few more degrees, that's where you start to see fantasy actually take a turn and go into the running game and away from the, the, the passing game once it gets you know below the 20s. Right now it's projected to be 23 degrees. All right. It's 93 degrees out here in Arizona right <laughs> yeah. now. Uh, but Lev Bell, not worthy of – you know, we'll see if he takes away from Clyde on third downs, goal line. It's almost – you know, if Bell's active, we're all observing what this backfield breakdown is going to be. If he's active, I'm still – starting Clyde Edwards away uh, Clyde Edwards away the way I would be starting him otherwise all right I've been defending Tim Patrick we've got Tim Patrick yes. and Jerry Judy uh Tim Patrick 80 percent snap count compared to 69 percent for uh Judge Judy nice uh red zone touchdowns uh, Patrick has two none for Judy top 36 weeks Patrick has three Judy has one uh target shares are similar Judy is slightly ahead over the last two weeks, Tim Patrick is averaging a 27% target share, though, which is super nice. The question, though, for Tim Patrick is, what happens now that Noah Fant is back? Is, I don't many, think anything. You think he'll still be that involved? Because Noah Fant has been out two – is it two weeks or has he missed three? I mean, they, they heavily targeted the tight end position last week without Noah Fant. Yeah, I guess that's you know, right. They, yeah. They, Robert O yeah. showed up. They, they involved him. So I don't think anything really changes there, but – so are you playing – let's just go within this game. Tim Patrick as your fringe flex upside play or Demarcus Robinson from Kansas City, who was he was on the field a ton. We all hoped that that uh, McCole Hardman would be the one who got on the field more, take things up with opportunities. But Demarcus Robinson, 34 routes run last week. He, he was involved. He So between those two guys – where are you going? I know the production has been with Patrick the last couple of weeks, getting over that hundo. That's but, where I'm going. But in this match, are you going with Patrick? Yeah, I would go with Patrick. I mean, game script, uh, they're going to have to throw the football. Patrick has been great. Uh, him and Judy, I don't look at them very differently from one another as a, as a spot start, but Patrick, two straight weeks of over 100. Jason, Tim Patrick or Jerry Judy? Jerry Judy. Why? Because I love him. I think he's... <laughs> I think he's great. We've got one game back from the injury with Drew Locke. It was against the New England Patriots where they're shutting down the number one option, and, uh, and they saw Judy as the number one option. Regardless of what we saw, they let Tim Patrick beat him. Now, they didn't Tim, let Tim Patrick beat him. He beat him. I'm not, I'm the not saying they didn't like, let Travis Fulgham beat him. He beat him. Sure, but I'm saying they focused their energy on Jerry Judy. 
<laughs> okay. I mean, I can't really argue with because I love him, so I'll let it go. Look, I like the honesty. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, Jerry Judy has one game, one game all year where you were happy you started him. It was because of a bomb touchdown pass. Uh, but would you play Tim Patrick over Demarcus Robinson? Yes. Okay. Travis Kelsey, yep. Noah Fant should be back, full practice. And I'm playing him. Yeah, your confidence in Noah Fant is uh, – I feel like I had it on the, in the off season, but you have exceeded. I stole it. You have exceeded us. I at this Shang point. Sung. I've stolen your soul. See, I thought Albert O looked good last week. He as did. Well. He, Albert O is banged up. Yeah. yeah. He he. The report is that he's on track to play, but you combine that with the, Noah Fant is the guy. He's he's the main tight end for this team. Okay. The San Francisco 49ers at three and three take on the two and three New England Patriots this week. Patriots are two point home favorites against the 49ers. This game has a minuscule 43.5 point over under. Got a couple of defenses. San Francisco took such a, uh, a movement forward on that defensive side of the ball last week, getting back. Mosley, it changed a lot for uh, what they were able to do because they had been kind of beat up over the past few weeks. New England's passing game hasn't looked great. I I think that you know this line, the 43.5, really limits what we're going to see fantasy-wise in this game, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a lower – like I, I would take the under, I think, in this matchup. Yeah, I, I completely agree. You have two great defenses. You have two of the teams with the slowest pace of play. These are teams that run the ball. One does it with their quarterback. The other does it with a, a slew of running backs. And, you know, with, with Raheem Mostert being out of the game, I don't expect the – San Francisco 49ers run game to be anywhere near as effective. So, yeah, this this projects to be a low-scoring, poor fantasy output game. I, I, if you wanted to pivot off of Cam, this would be the type of game that you would want to do that. I still think he's somewhat safe because of his rushing floor, but, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo can have big games and bad games. This does not appear to be a Jimmy Garoppolo game. So if your your confidence in the, the run game is a little hesitant on this matchup what about the confidence in their alternate run game which is where they just throw the ball backwards to guys like Debo and Brandon Ayukin yeah I mean I, I think that's are you be, playing Debo no I'm not playing Debo I'm not playing Ayukin I'm not Ayuk out uh <laughs> for this game I, I I don't want the passing game or or the running game. I know oh. we've talked a lot about um, Jarek McKinnon and whether we believe he will get the work. What is is Jeff Wilson going to be active? I, if he is, will Jamichael Hasty be involved? At the end of the day, all the arguments for or against McKinnon, the four arguments still have a low ceiling in this matchup. I I am on the McKinnon side, but I don't expect a phenomenal game this week in this matchup. Yeah, I'm not excited about many of the options in this one. I would play Debo Samuel. I'd be willing to play him. I know he's going to have six to eight opportunities. George Kittle, of course. But uh, I can't find anybody on the New England side that I want to start. No, I mean oh, James yeah, yeah. White in a pinch because if you're in a PPR league, you can get 10 yeah, points. Can I, can I unstart Devonta Freeman from last night and put like James White in? Because it's got to be better. It I, probably will yeah, be. Yeah. It the, will be better. the difficulty with White... And Harris, it's it's game script. Pick which one's going to happen. Are there? Do you think the Patriots will be up? Then then uh, Damian Harris is going to see a bunch of opportunities. If they're down, it's James White. And can this is a tricky one to project. Can we uh, can we add a Thursday night whoops um, situation? A mulligan, like in our league. So like, if you start somebody on Thursday and then they lay an egg, you can. You can change them out so you're not depressed going into the weekend? I don't think you can do that with a Thursday game. But you could make a universal rule where every team gets one whoopsie? bench whoopsie. Uh, that would be a fun rule to me. Like I, I I, wouldn't want it in you know our league of record, but if you're playing in a fun league where you you get one mulligan every week on a start-sit decision. I can't believe we never even talked about Evan Ingram's disaster of a – Okay. That's true, Mike. I've been keeping you in a good mood. I'm sorry to bring. No, you no, up. no. It's I, I. I figured out what happened okay. with, with Evan Ingram, uh, because they've just been throwing him these low average depth of targets. Uh, targets of like just absolutely mismanaging Evan Ingram. Ingram uh, was running deep, was open because he's a super athletic tight end who can get open against that type of coverage, 
and he dropped a pass. Uh, that would have won the game. That It would have won the game. I think Evan Ingram was just so surprised that he actually received that target. Downfield. That he just wasn't prepared to catch the ball. So we're back to apologizing for him. That's right. Oh, God. That's right. Oh, D Jason, I know what you were feeling when you saw that play. Jason just hates Evan Ingram because he drafted him. No, no. I hated Evan Ingram prior to drafting him. And I mean I and then I and then I stupidly drafted him and I quickly <laughs> got out. I mean I I don't he hasn't hurt my fantasy roster at all this year cuz I realized what a mistake I made early on and said not this time. It never happened. Jacksonville at 1 and 5, the Los Angeles Chargers at 1 and 4. Chargers 7 and a half point favorites in this one, a 49 point over under. I find that line a little bit interesting. It seems maybe a bit excessive. I'm excited for this game. Yeah, it it should be a fun one. We've had we've talked about a lot of the players in this one, from Justin Jackson to DJ Chark, Hunter Henry. <laughs> I mean, now that Ryan Fitzpatrick, Hunter Dragon Rider. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. I actually went from Viking to like how to train a dragon real quick. <laughs> like that's my exposure to. I mean, those are like Vikings, right? Yeah, they yeah. wear them. Just dragon Viking Vikings. Helmet. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I climb think aboard, that, Hunter. Now that Ryan Fitzpatrick is no longer a starter, this is like your two favorite quarterbacks in the league. You're all about that Herbert life right now. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you're always going to be on Team Minshew. I'm gonna and need... this is more than just uh, because I love him. I mean, Justin Herbert, 300 yards or multiple touchdowns in four or five games. Yeah, including two incredibly tough road matchups with Tampa Bay and the Saints. And what's insane is as a rookie, he's doing this on third downs. His his third down passing touchdowns, yards per completion, 74% uh, uh, completion rate on third down. They are they're leading the NFL as a rookie. It's incredible. Yeah, and they yeah, I like what the coaching staff is doing. They're trusting him. They're letting they're not just uh oh, it's third and 12 draw play. It's Let's let him throw the ball down the field because we have Keenan Allen. We have Mike Williams. We have players that can compete Hunter, at the point of the game. Dragon we have, Rider. We have Hunter. <laughs> throw to Hunter. Um, no, but, but I love Mike Williams' opportunity in this game. Imagine your catch radius if you could be on a dragon. It would increase. I don't think the dragon could catch. No, when you... The dragon doesn't have to catch, Jason. He, he, I'm riding the dragon. Do you think the dragon's riding me? <laughs> I think that if someone threw you the ball behind you while you're flying in one direction, you're not going to catch that ball just because you're on a dragon. I'm just saying it's vertical. Vertical catcher. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? All Sorry. Right. I've derailed us. We haven't really spent a lot of time on dragon catch radii. Radii? Yeah. Yep. Uh, Justin Jackson, my start of the week at the running back position. He was limited in practice. Uh, on Thursday, which uh, makes me feel a little uncomfortable. But if he's out there, he's the better player. So with him being limited and the matchup still being, you know, solid, the Jacksonville Jaguars are 27th against fantasy running backs right now. Is Joshua Kelly move into more of a stronger flex consideration? Yes. Okay. Assuming Jackson is limited again today, uh, he would. All right. Keenan Allen. You start him. Mike Williams, I think you should. He is undervalued right now. I know that he has an extreme kind of range of outcomes historically, but what more do you like? I mean, he's got a great matchup in this game. He's coming off a great game. He seems to be a better target for what Justin Herbert's gifts seem to be. Jason, Mike Williams or Jerry Judy? Mike Williams. Uh, the range of outcomes is obviously, as Andy just said, they're, they're very wide. He could be the wide receiver four on a week or the wide receiver 104. Um, but that's the role that he plays, and there are always fantasy options. Years past, it was Marvin Jones, where you need a big-time performance. You put that type of a player in your lineup. There's not a lot of guys that can walk away with the upside that Mike Williams has, and with Justin Herbert throwing a – an absolute beautiful deep ball. Uh, I really like what Mike Williams has been doing with him. Yeah, and this is very much like a Minnesota situation from last year where it's like the ball's going to Thielen or Diggs. I mean, the ball's going to Mike Williams or it's going to Keenan Allen. And when Williams was out there in week one, he had a 30% target share. Last week, I know Allen got hurt. It was 24%. 
those are the two players that are going to get the ball. And then the question is, you know, Mike, you've talked about Gardner. You like Gardner this mm-hmm. week. DJ Chark being back, it raises Gardner's ceiling. This game should be competitive. It should be a game that isn't, you know, the uh, the Patriots game at a 43 point over under. I think we get to that 49, 50 points or more, and we need it to. I mean, if you want Herbert to throw the football, you need Jacksonville to do its job. Right. Uh, James Robinson, you've been playing him? Yeah, he's a weekly start. Uh, Chark, uh, Jason, start of the week. So, yep. And then uh, are you taking a shot with any other deeper, you know, if this game is, if Gardner's going to be good, do you take a shot with Chenault or Cole? I, I, I think you can. Um, if if you project this game to be back and forth and Gardner to have a good game, they've had fantasy relevant weeks and you would, you know, there's, there's certainly players that you could find that are not as good uh, as Keelan Cole and Chenault from what they've been producing. I would also throw out James O'Shaughnessy as a, if you are really struggling at tight end, you have just garbage in there. I know it's a name you probably aren't familiar with, but Tyler Eifert might miss. The matchup is great. And I could, you know, we talk about those rando waiver wire pickup tight ends that have the highest chance of touchdowns. And maybe this is more for a DFS type of uh, pick. I know that our DFS pod with mm-hmm. the Borgogan, uh, they like James O'Shaughnessy as that DFS punt play of the week. So you might want to throw him in the lineup. Yeah, it's who I used when I did the uh, cage match with Smith. I used O'Shaughnessy to afford some bigger players because he is like 2,600. It's sure. free. Sunday Night Football, the Cardinals are at home taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Off a bye. Who are 5-0. and oh. And the Cardinals get to play primetime a couple weeks in a row here. 56 point over under. Seahawks three and a half point road favorites. I I think that we're going to see some fireworks in this in this ball game. That's fun, uh, which is great for fantasy because you're playing Kyler, you're playing Russell, uh, you're playing Carson, and, and I think you're playing Kenyon Drake. The opportunities, um, they've been there, and his production has been there in in several games. So, you know whether he's the butt of jokes or not. I don't know if you heard his mom. His mom, you know, weighed yeah. in, weighed in, and had the Mama same bear. had the same thoughts we did. You're running side to side too much, Kenyon. You should go towards the end zone. It's a it's a good piece of advice. Yeah, uh, if Daniel Jones' mom had called in, she would have said, fin- "Finish the run, finish the run." She would have said, "Slow down." <laughs> he could have too. That's the worst part. He ran so fast, he had a nice lead. He could have slowed down. Do you think he thought he could start skipping, and then he was like, "I don't oh. know how to skip." Oh no, I've made a bad mistake. I wish he just committed to the roll because if you if you come out if you fall and you roll, he could have rolled all the way into the end zone. That's before a good he point. before he was touched, just roll, roll, roll. I think he would have been the coolest touchdown of all time. Just somersaulted like a judo in. roll. Yeah, he could have somersaulted and got back up. I think he was pretty surprised of how open <laughs> the running uh, the run actually was. Yeah, that was special. We've like, we've all outrun our legs before. That is that is accurate. It's yeah. not it's not a fun feeling. No. And uh, for days, you're, yeah. you're going to be sore for days. Yes. All right. Hopkins didn't practice Wednesday and Thursday. I think a lot. This was one we could have brought up in news. We'll bring it up now. It's the ankle injury. He has. Uh, he had three straight do not practices before suiting up in week four. It's the Sunday night game, and they played Monday. Oof. They played Monday night, so you knew he was going to get some time off after the Monday night yeah. game. Doesn't worry me in the slightest. Yeah, I, I'll say this. I mean, as a Hopkins manager, I added. A, an insurance policy to my bench today. Was it Kirk? It, it wasn't because Kirk wasn't available. It was Andy Isabella. Okay. Just an emergency. What happens at the last minute? You know, Hopkins getting this game flexed out gets a few more hours out of it. I don't imagine he's going to miss a prime time game when we have the precedent that he's played without practicing. Do you guys have any other expectations? No, I I, I think you just laid it out great. He this this injury he didn't practice last week played and then he's not practicing he's going to play. Uh, Tyler Lockie, DK Metcalf, they're in your lineup. There's really not a lot to kind of debate in this matchup the, outside of maybe Kirk being a flex play. That's the question is, should people put Kirk in your lineup? Or do you feel like you're chasing points or have they finally got it together? This is a game with a very high over under. Seattle has been giving it up to wide receivers. I think Christian Kirk projects as a pretty decent play. And if you look at you know some of the other options we've been talking about, LaVisca Chenault, Keelan Cole. 
I would rather play the matchup here with Christian Kirk as the wide receiver too, with a somewhat hobbled or you know limited DeAndre Hopkins against Seattle than I would play LaVisca or Keenan Cole. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, Kirk Kirk had the big play last week. They didn't have to complete a lot of passes. Yeah, he seems you, like he's healthy. You still have to get the big play. I mean, his usage is just – it's not at a level that you want. So the 13% of the targets against Dallas, his his high on the year is the 19% against the Jets. So I'm I, – I, I feel like Kirk is – He's a a siren this week, and I'm not going to crash my boat into the rocks. Well, well said. I, Look, people stop by for the mythological if, jokes. If you if you drop a mythological kind of uh, metaphor, <laughs> I am willing. To, I won't fight back against. All it. right, it wins. That I love. Yeah, I don't think I that didn't was realize. A, if that you had gone mythological, Jason, with your Jerry Judy take, it would have been far better. I would have totally. I mean, that wasn't a joke. That was a metaphor. It was yeah. beautiful. Oh. Like, like when I saw Jerry Judy's like fantasy finishes, it was like a Medusa situation. Oof! I had to look away or turn to stone. Mm -hmm. I get. To <laughs> <laughs> I'm just staring at him because I want to see what his. I mean, oh, look. You know, when Hercules was a baby. There we go. You, you, know, <laughs> you, you saw the talent, but he couldn't you realize saw... it yet. He still had to grow up. He was a young man, but okay. once he was, you know, uh, older, then yeah. he dominated. Hercules, Hercules, <laughs> Hercules. <laughs> All right, uh, you're not messing around with tight ends in this game, are you? No. All right, that's one one bit of advice there. The Bears five and one taking on the Rams Monday Night Football. Rams are four and two. <laughs> the, the Bears just keep winning football games. Uh, the Rams. Ha! <laughs> the Bears are a good team. I the, know they are. They they really are a good team with a. Poor quarterback, whoever it is, leading the way. Yeah, and uh, the Rams have had a, a good season so far as well, 4-2. and two. They are favored by 5.5 at home in this game. Nick Foles' revenge. It's a 45-point over-under. Oh, no. Oh, no. Your eyes are telling me something. You know what? No. Yeah. Andy's almost upset of the week. I didn't know if we'd have one this week, but five and a half, that's too much here. I actually agree with you. And if Daryl Henderson is beat up, hurt, in the running game, the, you know everything's been predicated on that success. But I think Malcolm Brown against the, uh, the Bears defensive front is going to set up the passing game that hasn't really existed this year? Nope. No, I don't. So I'm not playing Jared Goff. How surprised were you last week at how the Rams, who had looked so good, were getting drubbed by San Francisco. San Francisco just completely dominating both sides of the ball in that game, in that boring, boring game. And that's when <laughs> I came to realize, like, three of their previous four games were against the NFC East. They played F Philadelphia, New York, Washington. I think that they might not be as good as they looked in that you know previous month, and the 49ers sort of exposed them. So I, I like this almost upset. All right, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, you've been playing them. You'll keep playing them. Tyler Higby, I think he's out of lineups at this point. Gerald Everett could be that surprise start if Higby's inactive, even if he's not. I mean, if he's questionable, the amount of blocking he's done, if you need a dart throw at tight end, I don't think Everett's the end of the world here in a game where – Henderson could be banged up. The running game might not be productive. The one place that the Bears have been more vulnerable is against the tight end position. I made the choice uh, last night in our Dynasty League. I benched Evan Ingram for Gerald Everett. How do you feel about that? Uh, TBD? After that, after that <laughs> drop. Oh, I know. Felt a little bit better. If he would have caught that pass, I would uh, yeah. I, uh, feel pretty bad. Yep. Yeah, it's funny how one play, right? I mean, it defines the entire perception of the game. Evan Ingram catches that ball. What is that, a 25-yard catch? Probably runs a little bit with it afterwards. He certainly would have. Boston Scott catches that one pass. I know. Mm. Well, it's funny. We were talking before about the Boston Scott catch. He he does that in the first quarter. You, you know, you're not happy as, a, as an opposing fantasy manager, but it's like, okay, it happened in the beginning of the game. Somehow with the clock running out, oh, you're yeah. like, it seems less fair. Well, it's because of the call of saying that you don't expect a big game and then you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. No. You're wrong. Yeah. You're flat wrong. 
All right, David Montgomery is a running back. He plays football for the Bears, and he does get 18.3 opportunities per game. Uh, the Rams giving up the fourth highest run success rate, which he'll need. Yeah. But again, this is uh, – He's I, an okay play. I, he's an okay play. He's he an could, okay play every week. We don't need to talk about the matchup. We don't. I mean, look – it doesn't matter whether he plays a really weak defense, a really strong defense. He's the type of player that gets a ton of volume and does the same thing with it every week, which is falls forward for a couple of yards, catches a few balls, and finishes. You know, if you look at his uh, consistency on the bad. season, you know, he was 15. He was the running back 15 two weeks ago. He was the running back 14 last week. Maybe it's maybe it's a little bit lower in this game. Maybe he's, you know, the, the running back 20, but he, he is a solid fantasy RB2 or uh, of, of someone you could plug in your flex. Since the Tariq Cohen injury, he is averaging nearly five receptions a game. He's he's safe. He's It's not fun. It's not a, a delight to plug David Montgomery into your lineup, but you just have to do it. Yeah, the catches are necessary due to the three yards per carry over the last four games. It was in last week, 24 opportunities. That was by far the most he's received this season yeah it's just a matter of can they get get ahead in this game he's a perfect uh he's a perfect like icon to represent the bears because he's not good but he's pretty good, good. At, but he's but he's good enough for fantasy it is like the bears are like man they're not a great team wait but a they're winning all their games so they're they're solid uh jimmy graham red zone looks coming his way each and every week Allen robinson yeah you're playing him Otherwise, I think that wraps wraps it up. It does. Prop it like it's hot. Presented by Monkey Knife Fight. We, we have to have Jason kick it off. Oh, right? yeah, for sure. I'm going to start with David Montgomery <laughs> and his, uh, his prop uh, of, let's see here, 57 and a half rushing yards. Now, we said, you're going to have him in your lineup. You're going to start him. He's going to be okay. But it's not going to come from rushing yards because he's not very good at rushing yards. Over the last four weeks, here are his totals. He's not good at rushing yards? Yeah. it. it you know, his grammar is inconsequential when you're talking about David Montgomery. He, he had 45 rushing yards, 27 rushing yards, 29 rushing yards, and 58 rushing yards. So this is this is someone that is not getting very close to this line. I don't think he is good enough against this Rams defense. I am taking less than 57 and a half rushing yards. All right, I'm going Matthew Stafford more than 301 passing yards. That's where the line is. Atlanta has given up 300 yards to opposing quarterbacks. Uh, let me do the math. Beep, 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 100% of the time. Mm. Every game. Three, 300 or more. So... Uh, I have been uh, very bullish on Matthew Stafford and Kenny Galladay this week. Stafford gets it done more than a, more than 301 passing yards. And I'm going, surprise, surprise. Oh, my. Look, I'm going Kyle Allen. His more or less is 242 yards, uh, and I'm taking the more. He's playing the Dallas Cowboys. He hit, this is Kyle Allen, he hit 280 passing yards last week against the Giants, and the Cowboys, uh, look, they're they're friendly against the passing game. I expect the Dallas Cowboys to have a much better performance this week, driving Kyle Allen to have to throw the ball more, and I think he can pass that 242. All right, these props have been very fun this year, and uh, you can check them out. Monkey Knife Fight uh, has tons of these more or less props. We break them down every week. If you want to play, go to ballerspicks.com, use the code BALLERS. They give you a 100% deposit match up to $50. That's uh, ballerspicks.com if you want to play along. It's a it, lot of fun. It's fun, man. It's a Enhance good time. the weekend. Enhance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That'll do it for today's episode of the show. A reminder, Mike will be live one hour before kickoff. Check it out. He'll help you out. No Joe Mixon, huh? Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.
do not forget, Brewhouse Legends Snack Nut Mixes has crafted three unique snack mix flavors that provide the salty, satisfying crunch you crave. Make the right decision with your Sunday snack lineup and relegate that boring snack mix to your bench. It's time to start the new guy. Go to brewhouselegends.com slash football to find more details on how to receive 10% off your purchase of Brewhouse Legends.